Steam Launch Wayward Bell. Designed and built by Charles Grosjean of Poway, California. Out of mothballs after several years running for the first time for some, after several years. The noise you hear is the uh, counterweights rubbing up against the new plexiglass cover. The original cover was steel and aluminum and you couldn't see the beautiful moving parts. So my father, Stephen Harcourt, went and uh, made new covers out of plexiglass, but now we need to clearance them for the counterweights. It's a com marine compound engine piston valve on the high pressure, balanced slide valve on the low pressure, condensing. This is the hot well where the water from the condenser is pumped into and then from the hot well it's pumped into the boiler. The boiler is a express type flash steam generator much like your steam cleaner, automotive steam cleaner just a continuous coil of tubing which you pump water in one end and steam comes out the other end. This one has a D superheater coil and a superheater coil and it's pretty sophisticated. Uh, designed after the double, double steam generator or the double steam power frame and all the controls or many of the controls are designed after a white steam car frame cars, water, heat super heat control, all of the uh, very fire control, very sophisticated. Burns kerosene. There's a, uh, it's a vaporizing burner. As you can see, it needs more cleaning up as it's been sitting for quite some time. This is the clutch to engage and disengage the propeller shaft. Currently, I have a hose spraying water on the condenser. This is a 15 inch by 17 inch pitch prop bronze propeller. According to the designer, Builder of the boat engine makes full power at 150 psi on the high pressure receiver at 850 rpm. And uh, according to his notes, it makes nine miles an hour at flying speed. That's everything wide open. As you can see it's Simpson Strickland style feed and air pumps. It's a 4 to 1 ratio, the engine is turning 4 RPMs for every 1 revolution of the, the crankshaft of the pumps. This enables the engine to run at high RPM without having floating of the, the check valves. These are all some of the regulators. And help determine and help control the, uh, the monotube boiler. Their monotubes are kind of got a bad reputation for being difficult to control. And it is a matter of having the 
right controls to uh, for you. As you can see, you don't need any to make this work. There's no electronics on this boat. There was a battery to light the fire, to light the, the preheater for the, the fire, but that is no longer in use. There's a pyrometer over there. With pickups and several different points in the boiler, but it's rarely used. No electronics other than running lights. As you can see it's quite a mess right now. It's 22 feet long and I believe 5 feet wide. Uh, wooden construction, very lightweight boat and trailer with all the machinery and everything weigh 2,700 pounds, which is exceptionally lightweight. Man many of the uh, pounds shed are thanks to the boiler design, very compact the amount of power it puts out. Automatic controls automatically compensate for engine speed so the fire won't grow in intensity with increased speed. Steam outlet temperature gets below a certain temperature, it'll, the burner will kick in a little higher. Or if it gets above 400, 450 degrees Fahrenheit, it'll, the uh, controls will cut the burner down and introduce water into the de-superheater cooler. All very complicated, but not at the same time.